Popcorn Sutton was born October 5, 1946 in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. He grew up, lived and died in the rural areas around Maggie Valley. Sutton had a long career making moonshine and bootlegging. Sutton said he considered moonshine production a legitimate part of his heritage, as he was a Scots-Irish American and descended from a long line of moonshiners. In the 1960s or 1970s, Sutton was given the nickname of Popcorn after his frustrated attack on a bar's faulty popcorn vending machine with a pool cue. Before his rise to fame at around 60 years of age, he had been in trouble with the law several times, but had avoided prison sentences. He was convicted in 1974 of selling untaxed liquor and in 1981 and 1985 on charges of possessing controlled substances and assault with a deadly weapon, but he received only probation sentences in those cases. Sutton then wrote a self-published autobiography and guide to moonshine production called Me and My Liquor, and began selling copies of it in 1999 out of his junk shop in Maggie Valley. The New York Times later called it a rambling, obscene an often hilarious account of his life in the trade. A woman named Ernestine Upchurch, with whom Sutton had been living in the 1990s, later said she helped write the book. At around the same time, Sutton produced a home video of the same title and released it on VHS tape. He was a short, skinny fella, who always wore his hat, that was kind of his claim to fame, his hat that he always wore. And his bib overalls, he always wore bib overalls. Even when he came to federal court, he was wearing bib overalls. He was a friendly fellow, and of course every time you would talk to him, he would say, Ray, I've run my last run of moonshine, I'm not gonna do it anymore, I'm just getting too old to be doing this stuff, radio reporter Ray Snader on Popcorn Sutton, 2009. His first appearance in a feature film, that was not self-published, was in Neil Hutchison's 2002 documentary. Mountain Talk, as one of various people of Southern Appalachia featured in this film focused on the mountain dialect of the area. Sutton next appeared in another Hutchison film that would become the cornerstone of his notoriety, called This Is The Last Damn Run Of Liquor I'll Ever Make. Filmed and released in 2002, the film quickly became a cult classic and over time drew the attention of television producers in Boston and New York. In 2007, a fire on Sutton's property in Parrotsville led to firefighters discovering 650 gallons of untaxed alcohol there, for which he was convicted and put on probation again by Coke County authorities. Sutton was featured in the 2007 documentary Hillbilly, The Real Story on the History Channel. The sourced footage from the 2002 documentary was also reworked into another Hutchison documentary, The Last One which was released in 2008 and was broadcast on PBS. It received a 2009 Southeast Emmy Award. In March 2008, Sutton told an undercover federal officer that he had 500 gallons of moonshine in Tennessee and another 400 gallons in Maggie Valley that he was ready to sell. This led to a raid of his property by the ATF, led by Jim Kevin Awe of Waco Siege Notoriety, in January 2009, Sutton who had used a public defender as his attorney in the case and had pleaded guilty, was sentenced to 18 months in a federal prison for illegally distilling spirits and possession of a firearm as a felon, a .38 caliber handgun. Sutton, 62 and recently diagnosed with cancer, asked the U.S. District Judge Ronnie Greer to allow him to serve his sentence under house arrest, and several petitions were made by others requesting that his sentence be reduced or commuted but this time to no avail. The judge noted that Sutton was still under probation in Tennessee at the time of the federal raid, and said that putting a man on probation again after being convicted five times of various crimes would not serve the community interest. He also noted Sutton's appearances on film surrounded by firearms and demonstrating how to make illegal moonshine. He said he had considered a harsher sentence of 24 months but had decided on 18 months after considering Sutton's age and medical condition. Sutton committed suicide by carbon monoxide poisoning on March 16, 2009, apparently to avoid a federal prison term due to begin a few days later. His wife Pam, whom he had married about two years before his death, returned home from running errands and discovered her husband in his green Ford Fairmont, 
which was still running, at the rear of their property in Parrotsville, Tennessee. Mrs. Sutton said, he called it his three-jug car because he gave three jugs of liquor for it. His daughter said he had told her in advance that he would commit suicide rather than go to jail, adding that the strength to die the way he lived, according to his own wishes and no one else's, Sutton's body was initially interred at a family graveyard in Mount Sterling, North Carolina. However, on October 24, 2009, it was relocated to his property in Parrotsville, and a public memorial service was held. His body was carried to its new resting spot by horse and carriage. Sutton's memorial grew in spectacle as country music singer Hank Williams Jr. flew in to pay his respects. A small memorial was also held for close friends and family. A conventional grave marker was used the head of Sutton's grave, reading Marvin Popcorn Sutton X Moonshiner October 5, 1946 March 16, 2009. He had also prepared a footstone in advance for his gravesite, and for years he had kept it by his front porch and had kept his casket ready in his living room. The epitaph on his footstone reads Popcorn said fuck you.